All right, guys, welcome back. Got to try and keep this video short. Um, this is going to be my aeration setup tour. Um, the aeration setup is going to be in my enclosed trailer, 14 by 7.5 foot Spartan trailer, the one I showed y'all in the equipment tour part two. Um, so simple trailer, nothing special to it. Painted it, uh, have a couple racks because it was going to be my lawn care trailer but uh things change so it's gonna be my aeration trailer for now um start out you know we got all blue pulling the trailer um we'll start out here this is my ryan lawn air uh stand on aerator uh, this is the first aerator i bought i bought at the beginning of the season used for seven thousand dollars and it has 200 hours on it um it's a very good unit. I did have to sink in about $1,800 to get a whole new, uh, the tine system uh, redone. We got new drum, new tines, new chains, sprockets, everything, because it was starting to tear itself apart from the previous owner. Um, so it has 200 hours on it. Uh, let's see, y'all can see that. It's not really one to focus, but y'all can probably barely tell. Um, so yeah, I had to sink 1800 bucks. So the total investment to get it running good was, you know, uh, $8,800. I sunk in another $1,800, put the spreader on it. Um, and it makes the machine pretty long. So unless you're doing big acreage, I'd recommend just, you know, sticking with the base machine and using a hand spreader. Um, and then you know, this machine is not a bad machine at all. The previous, you know, two, three years I've been doing aerations, I just rented the machine, and this was a machine I always rented. I just didn't have that on the front of it. And it's, you know, a very nice machine. I like how the sticks are laid out, how you can, you know, use your thumb to push the sticks back. That one's a little bit trickier to do. Um, and I have mixed, you know, opinions on, you know, the thumb you know, tying control versus a foot tying control. I have used a Toro stand on aerator before and they had the foot pedal control, but you couldn't customize it like that one could. So, uh, you know, it, it has its pros and cons. This one, you know, you're less likely to, you know, uh, accidentally put down you know, while going on the road, cause your hands are like this, you know? So, um, but either one, it's fine. I got used to both. If I had to choose one, I like Stinger setup, but you know, with Stinger, you can customize the control to where it would, if you press the pedal, it raises the tines, or if you press the pedal, it lowers the tines, and then you can just shut the whole thing off, you know? just so you don't accidentally put them down if you're going down the road. Uh, Toros, you couldn't do that. So I'd say, you know, if I had to go foot control, go with Stinger. And if you don't have Stinger in your area, go with Ryan. Um, Ryan, you know, it's not a bad brand at all. I don't see a lot of guys use them. And they're very simple to work on. Everything's spaced out pretty good. Um, your hydraulics are really easy to get to. All you do is you just take this cover off and, you know, raise it up, get in there. Um, you can flip up your platform for storage, same as the uh, stand on there. Um, and the other thing too, if you're doing maintenance on it, you can lower these jacks you got here and raise the tines up and then, you know, set the jack pin to leave them where they're at so you can have it raised up without using jack stands and jacks and stuff. So that's pretty cool, I like that. Um, but you know, other than that, this is a pretty good machine. What I plan on doing with it for next year is I'm probably gonna trade it in to go towards a Stinger Quad Air 3600, so the 36 inch width one. Uh, just because I, I love the Stinger ones now compared to this Ryan. You kind of get spoiled with it. To me, the uh, Stinger is a little bit more simple with the layout. You don't have chains driving the hydros, so less things to go wrong, in my opinion. Um, and the Stinger just 
feels a whole lot heavier duty in my opinion. But this is not a bad unit at all. It's still very heavy duty. Um, it's just I like Stinger better. And that, was, that being said, let's get into the Stinger Quad Air 3000. Um, so I picked up this unit just yesterday actually. Um, and the cash price was $16,400 with the C-Box. Without the C-Box, I think it's about around $12,000. So it's an, it's an additional $4,000 uh, investment for this thing right here. And to me, it's worth it. You're gonna be a whole lot more efficient. You're gonna be able to do yards quicker with this thing. You just pour your seed in and you just let it roll. Um, has the same motor as that one over there, I'm pretty sure. Uh, well, this is the 651. I, they look about the same. I mean, that's three years old or so. Kawasaki may just change the numbers. Um, but I don't know. It may be a little bit more powerful. Uh, but has the pumps and motors set up. It's not hydro. Um, and you don't have chains driving your tines. It's very simple. Very, uh, you know, simple. Nothing really much to go wrong with it, um, in my opinion. You got really beefy casters. Uh, caster supports here which I like um, this seat box I think can hold around 100 pounds if I'm not mistaken um, so a lot of seed you got your parking brake which mine doesn't work right now it needs adjusted which is kind of a bummer um, all it is is just a metal piece that clamps under the tire it doesn't really work so it needs more pressure on the tire but anyway uh, I like the layout of everything. Like I said, though, it is a little bit harder to, to me, it's just, you know, you can't, me, at least, it's kind of hard to grab onto these handles here, push it forward. Um, those ones, it feels like it's a little bit closer, uh, you know, but it's not terrible. It's just something you get used to. Um, your key, your time pressure, your time pressure adjuster right here, throttle choke, uh, handbar and then here you got to customize the foot control like I was explaining earlier you flip it to that side when you press the button it raises up the tines and if you push it to that side you can have it to where the button you know you know uh, you just hold it and the tines go down then you let it up and they go up uh, and then you got it to off position so if you accidentally put your foot on it it uh, doesn't uh, you know do anything so mainly for when you're transporting something your seat box how this works is so i'm pretty sure if i remember right uh we'll test it out right here uh, i think automatic is when you press the pedal down it turns on and this button yeah when you turn that button that just makes it the seed fall all at once, whether you press the pedal or not. And then if you do it on automatic, it's when you press the pedal. Uh, or when you, you can do it to where the pedal, you press it, it turns on, or when you press the pedal, it turns off. Um, so however you want to do it, then you adjust your seed flow with those two arrows and match it with a graph here. Very simple. Um, you can flip up your uh, foot thing there. So my opinion, I really like this quad air 3000 um i think it's gonna make me a whole lot of money over the years so i'm excited for that here we got my power seeder i picked this up monday for 5500 dollars cash um this is like a dethatcher verticutter and slit seeder all in one um basically what it does it has big old eight inch discs under there that slice into the ground pull up thatch and then you got your seed box here to where can put C in the ground if you want to. Same system as that, just smaller scale. So very handy. Um, you can control it. You don't have to push these safeties down to move it, but you pull this lever, it goes forward. And when you push this, it goes backward. Simple hydro sort of style, I'm pretty sure. Um, you have to push these safeties down when you have these engaged. So this side is your cedar to engage the cedar. This side is to engage your blades. Um, basically that's really the controls on it only complaints well first here's your adjustment 
you just pull this up and set it wherever you want. You got our seed flow, and that's basically all the controls. Uh, the two complaints is lack of power. This thing does bog down quite a bit, but I mean, I guess they really can't fit a bigger motor on this sucker. But other than that, power and gas tank size. I wish they had a bigger gas tank and a bigger motor. I think that'd help out a lot. But other than that, it's a very good machine. It's almost paid itself off with the amount of jobs I have signed up. So, you know, this thing will pay itself off hopefully this fall, if not next spring. And then, you know, just be money maker after that. So be very good investment. This thing's gonna transform yards like crazy. In my opinion, this is the way to go versus aerating because you know, you're pulling up all that thatch and everything. So you're putting, you know, basically seed in the ground, which that one will put seed in the ground directly too, but you're getting all that thatch and fungus out of your fescue yards with this thing at the same time. So I uh, try to sell customers, uh, you know, to go this route and the whole ordeal you know what i charge to dethatch and rake up all the thatch for a quarter acre lot is about 500 bucks because you know it's a lot of time a lot of work and then you know it's extra about 150 bucks extra to put seed down with fertilizer so it's uh you do the math on that it's about 11 jobs to get this thing paid off for so but you know, also I have customers, you know, that they just want me to run the machine over and they'll rake up the thatch. So it's a still very profitable machine in my opinion. Uh, so there's some like price points for y'all getting started into it. Uh, over here, we got the Stinger Walk Pine Aerator. Uh, picked this up a couple, well, about three weeks ago, I'd say. 5,500 bucks uh, cash price plus this uh sulky right here is additional 500 um this sulky can also work on that machine i'm just waiting on a bracket for it so i can switch out the sulkies pretty simple to use this machine you push this lever down and let the tines down get out of transport mode and then the controls are just like a zero turn you know you got your sticks you got your throttle right there and your choke is just this little o-ring right there only complaints you know in transport mode it's kind of hard to you know move around or turn really um you kind of got pushed down and turn it which is what you're supposed to do but it being front wheel drive it doesn't have a lot of traction on those tires um but it's not too big of a deal but when when you have the tines down it's a whole lot more maneuverable i mean you can basically you know whip this thing around because it's driving with tines as well so then it, the movement maneuverability goes up on it insane uh, only complaints, wish I had a bigger gas tank. The power is fine on this machine because it's mainly the weight doing the work, pushing the tines in the ground. So it pulls me just fine on that sulky, and I'm about 150, 60 pounds. So very nice machine, perfect to get in the backyards, which is what I bought it for. I think you can get a little bit bigger of a machine. Um, but other than that, great machine for the price. Great starter machine, too, if you just want to get into aerations, you know. You think about it i uh you know every year when i rent in the machines is about 800 bucks to rent them for uh three days and i just rent them you know one week for one weekend um and everything so uh you know you can buy this thing and you know probably pay it off you can very well pay it off in the first season and still make profit on it because you can do a whole lot more aerations and stuff because it's not limited to one week you know so this is a great starter unit i'd recommend to somebody um anyway moving on this is the husker varna d thatcher the thorn in my side this spring this is what i bought to get started into d thatching um but it's not self-propelled it's underpowered and it's like 200 pounds to push around and i had the bagger for it the bagger doesn't even work that great it doesn't shoot much grass in there so or thatch or whatever and this thing you know was 3300 bucks basically uh it still has a plastic on it it's been used twice what i'm going to do with this machine is trade it in for uh, to go towards two more mowers for next season um two more z3s and when those get in i'll do a video on them for y'all uh but yeah i mean this machine 
not too happy with it and you know would not recommend this machine uh, spend an extra couple grand to get that machine there if you want to do dethatching um, but yeah not not impressed with that machine uh, this is my spreader I had an echo one uh, it was an entry-level echo it was like 250 uh, the problem with it was uh, you know I used the Scott's brand seed that you know it's coated and it jam up the system down there so i got this prize lawn one it works a lot better with that coated seed uh you know which i'll be getting out of coated seed after this season um but you know this works a lot better and i'll probably get another echo one not that this one's bad just so i like my echo stuff but i'll get the more expensive one that has the better uh seed dropping system so if you know what i mean but anyway, try to keep this video short for y'all. Uh, hope y'all enjoyed it. Hope I didn't miss anything. I hope I wasn't talking too fast. But uh, just try to make it short for y'all. I believe I showed you inside the trailer. 7.5 by 14 foot trailer. And all of this does fit in that trailer, believe it or not. It's a tight fit. And you kind of got to jigsaw piece it all together. But it'll all fit. And I'll be posting a couple pictures on my Instagram. Uh, go back in the first couple videos I got linked in the videos I forgot how to link in the videos I got to figure all that out but uh hopefully y'all enjoyed um if I figure out how to link the stuff in the videos I'll put it in the description so but uh my uh you know Instagram has all the photos on this stuff but anyway hope y'all enjoyed let me know any questions you have down in the comments um any you know questions advice y'all need let me know i'm always happy to help and i love talking shop about this equipment so and stay tuned for future videos um you know next few weeks or months and i'll have more content for y'all but anyway hope y'all enjoyed keep grinding out there be safe out there i know the heat's died down but you know don't work you know too long of hours out there in the heat if y'all are still having you know heat waves and stuff but anyway i'll see you all in the next one take care